Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and back in September when Godot 4.3 released, we took a quick look at Godot 4.4. Since then, there have been two more development releases, and they've added a ton of new functionality. So what we're going to do is take a sneak peek at what to expect in Godot 4.4, and there's some pretty nice stuff there. By the way, we're going to be using um, GDQuest Excellent TPS demo uh, just for demonstrating some of these features. This is available for download if you are interested. By the way, probably the smallest new thing is my favorite new thing. Let's go ahead and grab something in the world. And let's say I want to transform this person. Something you do quite often, right? So I want to modify the position. Well, what you can do now is right click and say this is a favorite property. I say I want to do scaling as well. Right click, favorite property. Then we go to the top and you now have this new favorites category right here. And everything that you've pinned up there is now there. If you want to go ahead and get rid of something, you can right click it and unfavorite it and it will no longer be at the top. This is one of those little things, but it's going to save so much time on a day-to-day -day basis. I absolutely love this one. Another one we've got here is a new physics based snap. So I'm going to use this guy right here as a demonstration. So what we can do here is hit the shift G key like so, and then when I move it around, it's using a ray-casted um, ray for doing interaction for placements. Now that shouldn't have happened. It bounced down inside, so every once in a while it glitches out. It's when I kind of crossed off the item, but there you see when I'm on a physics object, it will place it accordingly. This is going to make placing objects in your physics-based world so much easier going forward. A lovely new feature. By the way, that one has a configurable shortcut. So go to your editor settings. By default, it is Shift G, but you'll find it under reposition using collision, and you can change that to whatever you wish it to be. Lovely new feature, that one. Uh, again, especially if you're placing objects in a world with physics. So normal movement like so, then you hit Shift G, and then it's going to snap to physics objects in the world. Lovely new feature. All right, so next up, we have something completely new you may notice right over here in this game tab. Now, this is a very Unity-esque feature uh, and basically allows you to run your game and then interact with it at the same time. The best way to probably explain this one is to show it. So we switch over to the game tab and things are gonna look a little bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is make one quick change to make this work so much better. Eventually it's gonna be embeddable into this window, but for right now, we go to project, project settings, display, window, and we're gonna set our game to run always on top. It makes it work just so much better. So there we go. So we got game selected over here and I'm gonna go ahead and run our scene. So now we have our game running. Let's Start our demo up. All right, here we go. Oh, I set a breakpoint. Let me get rid of that breakpoint. We'll get back to that one in just a second. So, all right, let's start over again without the breakpoint. Here we go. So we run our game, boom. So here we are in our game world and it's pinned on the top. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and we can tab over here and we've got this new game tab available right here. Now with our game running, you're gonna notice we now have new options up here. So what I can actually do is say, okay, I wanna interact with this guy. So right now I'm in input mode, which is gonna be just like running your game normally. I can switch over here into 3D mode. And now what I can do is interact with objects in the scene. So notice over on the right down here, my whatever I select is being updated accordingly. And you can actually go ahead now and make changes on the fly. So for example, here, I wanna come down here and say, all right, let's scale and we can scale that guy up. As you're running your game, you can make interactions and participate with it. This is like something that Unity has had uh, for years and years and years, uh, but now it's available here. And now the one thing you're gonna have, is the same sort of experience as Unity though, we'll see in a minute. When I stop playing the game, these changes are going to be uh, removed. They're not persistent changes. So it's a way of doing evaluations and testing of what your current experience is. Another thing that you can do is I can hit the pause key at any time and then right here, I can snap forward one frame at a time with each press. Uh, there is a hot key for this. I don't remember what it is, but uh, this is hot keyable. So you can do this one frame at a time. And again, you can switch out of input mode. So this would give me, again, if I focus on the window, I'll be back in uh, controlling things mode. So if I go back to, if I unpause and have input turned off, so now I can move around in the world accordingly. But if I switch back over here, again, 3D mode, we can select objects in the game world and interact with them and make changes and so on. Another thing you can actually do is come up over here, click this guy, and this gives you the ability to override the camera in the game world. So if you wanna go ahead around while your game is running and see things, you can see them. And again, with this guy selected right here, I can come in and select 3D elements and they're selected over here 
or I could select two elements if I had any. So uh, that is the new game run mode. Another thing to be really aware of though with this one is that when I'm done, so now that I'm out of game mode and back over here, you'll notice he's not scaled up. He hasn't moved. Anything else I've changed in the world hasn't changed. It's a non-persistent thing. So it's a way of doing evaluations and testing of the game you are currently running, but pretty cool stuff nonetheless. Now this last thing, this one was actually showcased in the Dev3 update, but I'm going to show it here because uh, frankly, I um, I think I forgot to back then. So what we got is I'm going to set a breakpoint in our game world. doesn't really matter where. just want to make sure it's something that will be hit. So we're going to run our game and that should be hit almost immediately. So here we go, uh, run, resume. And another key thing you're gonna want, this is a trick here, is I gotta go back to game and make sure I set it back to input mode. So that's something you're gonna run into all the time, like what I just did right there. But we'll resume our demo right there, and then you see I hit my breakpoint. So my breakpoint was hit down here. Well, we got a new feature here. This is called REPL. If you come from a command line world where you do a lot of things, uh, down here, so it's REPL stands for, uh, what is it? Read, evaluate, print loop, I believe it is. Basically what it allows you to do is just basically programmatically check things in your role. So for example here, I wanna see the value of ground height. I hit ground height and evaluate it, and then you see the immediate result right there. We can also go ahead and pick game objects. So you see here, for example, um, what do I have as a game object here? So yeah, let's try velocity. So if I pick velocity, you're gonna notice it's showing the values appropriate like this. Whereas if I pick something like a game object, like this game or controller, you're gonna see you get an object ID over here and then watch over here as I select it. So you see here, it will bring the details of that particular node up. So you've got the ability to basically type in commands and, and evaluate the results of them down here. It's just another option for debugging. Uh, this is again, very common from, uh, if you're working with something like Python on the command level, a REPL loop is a very common way of basically uh, doing evaluations of how your code is running as you're running the code itself. And then we have one final change, which I honestly don't know what I think of. So here you can see our file system here are the various different files available in it. So you're gonna notice here, uh, full screen handler, for example, .gd. And I'm gonna come up over here, and we see full screen handler .gd. But you'll also notice it's automatically assigning UIDs. Now it's not assigning UIDs to everything, because uh, you're gonna notice something like a TSCN file. The Playground TSN, for example, if I open this one up in code, you're gonna notice it actually registers a UID automatically. So this is a way for all the resources that don't have UID registered, they will automatically get them. Now they'll show up on the file system, uh, but they will not show up uh, here inside of the file system inside of Godot. Now this gives you a way to uniquely reference uh, assets and resources within your game world without caring about the path. Uh, the one very important thing is if I move this file, so if I move this right here, uh, Godot should take care of it for me, but if I move it down here, I need to make sure that I grab the UID file that goes with it if I'm moving it somewhere else. Again, I'm not 100% certain what I think of this particular change. Uh, it's the only one that I'm a little iffy on, but mostly just because I hate having file system clutter. I, I like when, It's like when something puts something in my C root, it just drives me absolutely insane. Uh, so I don't like that aspect for it, but I know what they're definitely going for and I can understand the reasoning behind it. So ladies and gentlemen, that's a highlight of some of the coolest new features coming in Godot 4.4. Again, we're pre-beta right now, so this stuff isn't even at that level. There's other things that we talked about earlier on. There's a web editor and an XR editor, so you can actually edit your game inside of VR if you so wish to do. And you can see this is the fifth um, dev update. And the big things we got in this one are the UID and the favorite editor items. Uh, and then the fourth one is kind of the other stuff that we talked about today uh, is things like the interactive game editing and the collision detection using rays to position objects using collisions. And there's more to it than that. So you've got uh, changes to the way shaders work, shadow casting and so on. And then of course there are the other three as well, mostly covered in previous videos. So that's what we can expect in Godot 4.4. I really like the favorites feature. Again, the only one I'm a little iffy on is it creating this UID. It's just because of the way it did it. I, I, he's explained why he couldn't use metadata, but I didn't really fully understand why it couldn't just be metadata hidden in a metadata folder. Uh, I would have preferred that. I hate it cluttering up the file system personally, but I understand the purpose behind this and it enables you to again, be path agnostic with the way you access and handle resources, which is nice, but 
I don't like it cluttering up the file system. So what do you think of that one? What do you think of this update? Are you excited by Godot 4.4? Anything here that you really are looking forward to? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.